it's, it's magical because it's also fast, you know? And so whether it's, it's, um, uh, motivated by your, your institutional need to engage the most consequential technology of all time or the fact that it's getting better all the time. Right. So it's not that hard. I think the number of excuses is running out. So let's talk about that for a second because change is hard. I've got an endless list. If I'm a nation state leader, I'm facing increasing amounts of geopolitical risk. My, my, I don't know who my allies are. Elections are coming. There's any there number of things I've got to, to deal with. But now I, let's say I understand that, that this is important. You guys spend so much time talking to nation state leaders who are thinking about what are the risks of adopting AI too fast? And, and you're right. The zeitgeist has shifted based on the Paris Action Summit. It seemed like people are, there's, there's a more, a tone of optimism more than there was a tone of pessimism a year ago. But what are the most common uh, questions you get from nation state leaders when they're asking you about risks and how to think about them? So I've heard several questions. Uh, but one of the risks is to see your population start uh, getting afraid mm-hmm. of the technology for fear of it replacing them. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that is something that can actually be prevented. Uh, if uh, we collectively make sure that everybody get access to the technology and is trained in using it, right. so the the skilling of of the of the various citizens of the populations is extremely important, and stating AI as an opportunity for them to actually work better and showing actually the right. the, the purpose of it. Uh, through applications, through things that they can actually install on their smartphone, uh, through public services. Uh, we're working, for instance, with the French un- unemployment system, 